Over. Well, station control, Ulysses 10 here. Tell London control I'll be at London airport at... Tell them I won't make it! <laughs> Why do I never meet a beautiful Russian spy in a sleeping car? Possibly because the Treasury would send you a memo afterwards asking why it was necessary for you to travel first class. That's just why I'm here. Mr. Lovegrove wants to see you there immediately. Happy Lovegrove? What, what's he want? He just sent me to get you. He's been trying to find you. Have you been on a jag? Everyone seems to be interested in your financial status these past few days. Have you been keeping out of the way? What do you mean? Oh, the Treasury wants to know if you're a gambler. Well, occasionally go berserk and play gin rummy for a penny a pointer. What sort of gambling? Oh, you should know. We'd better get round there. Right. What's the matter? Nothing. Oh, come on. Jump in. No, thanks. I walk. You've been attracting a lot of attention lately. It's my personality. I've tried to fight against it, but without success. And you say you don't gamble. How does it come about, then, that you owe a casino 500 pounds? Who says so? A gentleman called Alexander who runs a gambling club in Mayfair called Ormax. He's apparently worried over your losses and has started checking round to find something out about you, a most disturbing state of affairs. Oh. You know, we don't like people paying too much attention to our agents. And, uh, I think you know the rules about gambling. Gamblers, Drake, are a bad security risk. I've never been bitten by that bug. And you've never been to this club? Scott's on it. All right. You don't look fit. That's nothing. Late nights? Huh. You don't know anyone called Alexander? Only the great. You know, as well as I do, we won't tolerate these weaknesses in our agents. I want a satisfactory explanation by the end of the week. Otherwise, I shall report the affair to the minister. And you know what to expect. He's not as understanding as I am. Good evening, madam. Good evening, sir. Good. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Not a glorious evening? Yeah, it's not too bad for the time of the year. Nice to see you again, sir. Again? I've never been here before. You haven't, sir. I hope you enjoy yourself. I'm not a gambling man. Oh, they all say that, sir, when they come in. But you'll be surprised if I tell you the names of some of the people I've had to lend the cab fare home to. Would you mind parking it for me? Oh, a new car, sir. No, I should have been. Anything wrong, sir? Huh? Good luck, sir. Thank you.
Good evening, sir. Good evening. Nice to see you again. Again? Well, yes, sir. Then I'm a member here. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure you are, sir. What was the name? Drake. John Drake? That's right. So I'm a member. You couldn't tell me where I live as well, could you? I beg your pardon? That's a joke. Mr. Drake? I'm Elaine Pearson. Oh, yeah. Last time I was here, we had a high old time, didn't we? I don't understand. Oh, that makes two of us, would you excuse me? I work here. Oh, really? I didn't know they had hostesses at a place like this. I'm not a hostess. I'm Mr. Alexander's assistant. Oh, no, Alex. How has he been making out these days? He wants to have a word with you. Oh, what about? Oh, come now, don't pretend you don't understand. Oh, I'd like to have several words with him. Follow me, then. Mr. Drake, Paul. Mr. Drake? It's always a pleasure to meet a good customer. I love good music, don't you? Turn it off, my dear. Thank you. Now you can get back to your work. Please sit down. Something to drink? Whiskey, glass of champagne? This is not a social visit. No, no, Mr. Drake. I'm glad you came back. I thought we'd offended you. Why should I think that? You'd be surprised at the number of people who owe us money who become offended. And you're under the impression that I, uh, I owe you money? 500 pounds. What for? <laughs> you know, I love a man with a sense of humor. So do I. I, uh, I think we're going to get on very well together. Of course, if it would embarrass you to pay it all at once. It would embarrass me to pay it at all. Really, Mr. Drake. You're making it very hard for me. I see the check. Certainly. If you promise not to do anything foolish, like try to tear it up. Oh, uh, um, this is uh, not even my signature. Really, Mr. Drake, that won't do. Furthermore, that is not my bank. You're not being evasive, are you, Mr. Drake? We have ways of making life very unpleasant, if you are. You frighten me, Mr. Alexander. That is not my trick. Otto. Ah, Otto. Tell me, John Drake. That's right. What does he look like? Uh-huh. Thank you. Break it to me gently. Uh, Mr. Drake, what can I say? Say you're sorry. Of course, but I feel that I must do more than that. You've been the victim of a most unfortunate case of misunderstanding. I'm really very upset. It's a very unfortunate coincidence that there should have been two John Drakes. I'll make you an honorary member. I don't gamble. What a pity. I find it one of the most exciting of human activities. Still, I expect that you find travel equally exciting. You are in the travel business, aren't you? Which John Drake are you thinking about now? Are you, my dear fellow? Naturally, we've checked up on you. Such a pity we checked up on the wrong one. Better luck next time. Please enter. Faites bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Rien ne va plus. Careful now. I've been spanked in the middle of a casino. No, but I think I could get to like it. Are you always so aggressive? Always. 
Or was Mr. Alexander beastly to you? No, on the contrary, he made a mistake and he apologized handsomely. Doesn't sound like him, apologizing. It's quite easy, you should try it sometime. Anyway, everything's all right now. Let me get you another one. Oh, really? Please. You are kind. You know, there are so many mm -hmm. men in the world, and I never seem to meet any of them. Do you believe in destiny, Mr. Uh, Drake? Oh, how do you do? I'm Elsie Fairbrother. Hey, so what were you drinking? Uh, champagne. Yes. We Two must have it at the table. Champagne, please. <laughs> yes. What's the hurry? It's that girl. Hmm? I've noted. Sometimes she gets a look in her eye, and she wins. Which one? Madam. One in the green dress. Isn't this fun? It's hilarious. <laughs> My mother always used to say, it isn't the men you, but the men you sit next to who make a girl's evening. Hmm? Yes, your mother must have been a very witty woman. She was. Thank you, Madam. That's where I get my sense of humor. <laughs> Oh, sure. Don't bet hmm? till I do. Oh, but I, I haven't got any chips. Here you are. I used these. Oh, no, I couldn't. Oh, no. silly boy. Just bet for me. <laughs> I know you're going to bring me luck. Cinq, rouge, un fer et manque. Faites bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Faites bonjour. Faites bonjour. Faites bonjour. Rien ne va plus. 18, rouge, fer et manque. Merci bien pour le personnel. Merci bien pour le personnel. Merci, madame. Merci. You keep them for me for a rainy day. I hope it comes soon. <laughs> oh, black. It's the color of death. Unlucky, my dear. Thank you, Pierre. I only cash them in at full moon. Just a little superstition I have. Are you superstitious, Mr. Drake? Uh, only when I owe money that I've never lost. Oh, that sounds very well, deep. Yeah, You'll have to explain it to me. Well, another evening, perhaps. It's oh. been extremely nice and... Uh, no, I must thank you. After all, you brought me luck. <laughs> I wonder what I brought you. An idea. Ooh, a naughty one, I hope. Really? really? <laughs> well, could I? Thank Goodbye. you. Goodbye. Uh, sure. I do hope I meet you again soon. Bye-bye. I do hope so. Why, Mr. Trake, I thought you left some time ago. How can you say that when you were watching me play roulette? <laughs> my goodness, you're a man after my own heart, indeed you are. You know, we should sit down one evening over a magnum of claret. <laughs> what tales we could tell. Yes, I'd love to. Unfortunately, I feel you'd stick me with the bill. Oh, fry, Mr. Drake, fry. What sort of man do you think I am? <laughs> well, you're leaving early, sir. I hope they haven't cleaned you out. No, I won. Oh, I'm pleased to hear it. I'll just get your car, sir. Mm. Oh, just give me the key. I'll... Uh... Get it myself. Well, they've done a good job on it. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, sir, but didn't you have a smash up, sir? Now, look, I have never been here before. Then it must have been somebody else, sir. Yes. Everybody keeps apologizing. It makes me feel so uncomfortable. To make the most of it while you can. Probably the last you'll get for months. Anything else on your mind? Yes, I'm not happy about it at all. 
Oh, this business. It's too easy. Have you checked Alexander with records? Oh, yes, of course. There's nothing there. Do you want to follow it up? It's too packed that this man who bounced the check is John Drake. And I'm John Drake. What about this other John Drake? The other one? Mm. I believe he doesn't exist. Well, what do you want to do? I want to become a real gambler. According to the Treasury, you already are. What is the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing's the matter. Oh, yes, there is. I've noticed it for days. You're sure you've not been drinking? <laughs> And you must be ill. I'll have you checked up by Dr. Gallup. There's nothing the matter with me. I just want to clear up this business, that's all. Oh, Dr. Gallagher, this is Lovegrove here. I've got Drake with me. Will you give him a checkup, please? Oh, poor old John. Well, I've got nothing on right now. Send him along. He's there now. Well, run along then. Granny Lovegrove. You look fit enough to me. Feeling fine. Come on, then. Like a drink? No, I'd rather not. You must be ill. <laughs> Get on the honey back. Look up this evening. Lovegrove thinks I'm a secret drinker. Ah, oh, stupid old fool. Mm We should tell Mr. Lovegrove that, Dr. Gallagher, because I've, I've got this job to do. Hmm. Good evening, sir. Good evening. No car tonight? No, I thought I'd stretch my legs. It hasn't smashed it up again, sir. What? Uh, uh, John Drake, the other one. Mr. Alexander said he'd make me an honorary member. That's quite correct, sir. Thank you, sir. The end of a well, well. Mr. Sunshine is among us. You could make good morning sound like an insult. Except that I'm never up in the morning. I don't think Mrs. Fairbrother has arrived yet. Hmm? The merry widow who was trying to lead you astray last night. Oh, her. Oh, her. You must get so bored with women throwing themselves at your head. It's a professional hazard. Don't tell me. You're a lady's hairdresser. I'm a travel agent. I've always wanted to go to Acapulco. Well, for 247 pounds 10 plus the airport tax, it could be arranged. Oh, I thought you could give me a professional discount. Well, that depends. What exactly does your work here entail? You could call me Paul's assistant. Paul? Paul Alexander, the manager. You've met him. I do know him well. You're pumping me, John. Or should I call you Mr. Drake? Just so will do. Uh, you can buy me a drink, sir. Yeah, I thought that I might uh, go and win myself some money. If it wouldn't bore you too terribly, I'd come with you. Feel free. Where is Uncle Paul tonight? He's away. Last time, you brought me luck. The end of a poop. No, un rouge. Et un 
Perhaps it's a punishment for your being so nasty to me. Perhaps we got off on the wrong foot. Oh, is that an apology? Well, uh, what about that drink? Right. Oh. Cab, sir? Oh, uh, no, let's walk. I'd like a breath of fresh air. Good night. Good night, madam. Good night, sir. Good night. You're much nicer when you're not trying. I wouldn't bet on it. Oh, well, you put my back up, that's all. I wasn't in the best of moods myself. Friend Alexander was a little irritating. He's not so bad when you get to know him. Do you know him well? Oh, well, you know. No. Well, here we are. Thank you for walking me home. My pleasure. If I didn't think you'd be shocked, I'd ask you in for a drink. Try me. Oh. Would you like a drink? It's a nice idea. My goodness, you uh, working girls certainly live in style. Why, Mr. Drake, how good of you to call. Thank you, my dear. You can go to bed now. What has my namesake done this time? Sold you London Bridge? <laughs> my dear Drake, whatever the time, your mind is like a rapier. <laughs> yes, I like that. I like it very much. Look, let me get you a drink. I have some excellent brandy. Personally, I find a glass of burgundy soothes the internal stress of this hour. Presumably, you didn't get me here to take part in a wine tasting. <laughs> there you go again, off like a greyhound. <laughs> what a restless mind. You must watch yourself, Mr. Drake. You must watch yourself. You might do yourself an injury. I'll have a brandy. Now, I hate the affectation of those balloon-like glasses. I hope you agree. Cigar. Thank you. Do sit down. And now, to business. The day I do business with you, Mr. Alexander, is uh, a long way off. <laughs> I admire you, Mr. Drake. Uh, professionally, of course. I can't imagine that our businesses have very much in common. Of course not. My word, I am enjoying myself. Now, I feel that you could be a very dangerous enemy, Mr. Drake. That's why I'm so delighted that you're on my side. I think you ought to see someone about your fantasies. <laughs> Mr. Drake, you should talk about fantasies. <laughs> I beg you, not too much merriment. Though my doctors assure me that my heart is in the right place. It hangs there rather precariously. It's late. A hard day tomorrow. Of course you have. That's one of the things that I admire about you. Your restless energy, your constant drive. You chose an interesting profession. The travel business is as good a way as any of earning a living. I know. But there's one thing that has puzzled me, though. What's that? How it is that the impeccable John Drake of Chelsea Mews South often travels under an assumed name and indulges in, what shall we call them, unusual activities. What are you doing in Cannes now as Mr. Simons? And in Cairo as Mr. Ryder, Maxwell Ryder. The name has a ring to it. And in Africa as uh, Major Sullivan, wasn't it? Oh, yes, I've followed your career for more than a year now. I just wanted to make quite sure that my original hunch was correct. Which was? You work for the government, Mr. Drake. Oh, not by selling stamps over a post office counter. Spy is a melodramatic word. Agent is nicer. Travel agent? No, Mr. Drake. Shall we say an agent who travels? You're out of your mind. I am, despite the trappings of wealth you see about you, a poor man, a hireling. A manager's life is not a happy one. Yes, I've been searching for some time now for a way of freeing myself from bondage to enable me to spend the rest of my days in a more congenial way. Couldn't you get into an old people's home? <laughs> yes, I hardly think that the wine that they serve in an old people's home would be quite up to my standards. No, Mr. Drake, I'm proposing to ask you for 10,000 pounds. 
I haven't got £10,000, and even if I had, I wouldn't give it to you. Of course not, and but your employers have. You can tell them from me that unless I receive the money within 48 hours, your photograph and description will be on the desk of every foreign embassy in London. You will then, of course, be completely unemployable. You're bluffing. Not at all. I have your IOU. Remember, you very kindly gave him an example of your signature the other evening in my office. Uh, before you tear it up, I must warn you that it's a photocopy. Are you sure you haven't got the wrong John Drake? Which John Drake have I got then? in you. Stop fidgeting. You've been untruthful with me. The plain fact is you are a compulsive gambler, and I'm not sending in this chip to cover your losses. That is not gambling. It is blackmail. You don't dispute that this is your signature. Of course it's my signature. I've been it's trying to explain. It's the thing that I could underwrite in a month. You have a most curious concept of public funds. Yes, but don't you realize that if I don't pay up, he'll blow my cover. I'll be finished in the service. You should have thought of that before you started gambling. But it's not gambling. It was necessary to do that in order to... Oh, that. yes, always necessary with you blokes when you're staying at four-star hotels or bribing nightclub hostesses. These small luxuries compensate for the hard life we... Yes, take it easy, Drake. I dare say I work just as hard as you do. Yet I find two weeks cycling holiday in Dorset every year. Ample refreshment. Why don't you hire a tandem next year? Then you can take me along as well. Facetiousness won't help your cause. Mm -hmm. He's going to anyway. Hmm? I said you make it seem pretty hopeless. Uh, and there's another thing. If you leave the service prematurely, you won't be entitled to a pension. No hard feelings. Hey. Don't forget to pump up your tires. <laughs> walk in here and just make an appointment with my secretary. Nice of you to ask us in. Yes, we appreciate that. I hope you've come to the wrong house. I'm sure he does. Sir. They always say that. What do you want? We've come for the money. What money? Ah, I wish I had a pound for every time I'd heard that. Mr. Alexander thought we ought to pay you a visit. We'll take a check. On your way. You're letting the side down rather badly, you know. What side? A gambling debt is a debt of honor. Yes, a gentleman would rather go without food for a week than not pay a debt of honor. It's just not honor, boy, the way you're behaving. Oh, we may not be a first-class power anymore, but by George, we know how to pay our debts. Yeah, yeah. Run along. Oh, no, Derek doesn't like being pushed around. Do you, Derek? Why don't you be a good boy and give us the money? There isn't any money. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I do hate violence. I have an upset stomach for days afterwards. 
Are you sure you wouldn't like to pay us that money? Well, not really, no. <laughs> me feel positively girlish again. <laughs> yes, I don't think Mr. Drake will be in this evening. Someone taking my name in vain. Mr. Drake, I was just asking about you. Very nice of you. Good evening. Good evening. I know it was a bit forward of me, but... No, you mustn't say that. Mr. Alexander said he thought you weren't coming in this evening. No, I wonder why he should have thought that. If you would excuse us, Mrs. Fairbrother, for a few moments, sir. Mr. Drake and I have some business to discuss. <laughs> And it's lucky he did come in, isn't it? Very lucky. Perhaps, perhaps you and I could have a little drink together later. I look forward to it. It's a very nice idea. I'm like yours. I know. It was unworthy of me. Alas, we're all human. And I wanted the money. Can you believe that? I'm tired of all this absurd charade. As I told you before, they, they won't play ball. But you're one of their best men. Yes. How can they do this to you? You could always get your MP to ask a question in Parliament. Do you think if I brought down the price? You'll have to give me more time. You'll try? I'll do my best. Start, fella. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, are you going to play? If anybody's playing with this gorgeous man, it's going to be me. <laughs> After all, I saw him first, didn't I? That's right. Mm -hmm. How have you been keeping? Oh, not the same without you. <laughs> ah, zero. I always bat number one after zero. It was your madam, monsieur. It was you. There she is, and she's got that look again. Nope. I'm sticking to number one. Rien ne va plus. Vingt et un, rouge, un père et face. See me. Whenever she gets that look, she always wins. Merci bien. Merci, madame. Bonjour, madame et monsieur. Taxi, sir? Yes, please. Are you sure I couldn't persuade you to have just a, a tiny nightcap? No, I have to be up very early in the morning. Uh, another time, then? Yes, please. <laughs> Good night, Helen. Good night. Thank you. Don't shoot. It's a friend. What heart-rending story has uh, Big Daddy asked you to tell me this time? He doesn't know I've gone. Oh, you're going to catch it, aren't you? Don't be rude. What surprise have you got in store for me tonight? I just want to talk to you. I'm listening. You don't trust me. You can do better than that, can't you? Oh, please. Look, it's late, I'm tired, and you bore me. I could help you. But thanks, I feel a lot safer with you as an enemy. Look, I know you need some money. I mean, I know that Paul's got something on you. What? I don't know what, but I could help you get some money. 
What do you get out of it? Look, we can't talk here. Are you going to drive me home? Yes, if you promise not to ask me up for a drink. You know the wheel is fixed, but you don't know why. No. Paul just tells me to go and play a certain number. You always win? Well, only then. He doesn't like me playing otherwise. Is it always the same man who puts his chips down where you do? Not always. Different men. And they know that when you bet on a single number, they can bet and win. That's right. Why are you telling me all this? Well, I know you're short of money. So am I. When I bet, I don't win anything. They don't cash my chips. But if you'd like to follow me, you can put on as much as you like. I thought perhaps we could uh, split. Phone me next time. How much warning do you get? It varies. Not more than ten minutes. I can make it in five. I'll say something like, uh, see you tonight. Good evening, Constable. Good night. night. Stick around for my call. So you're absolutely certain? Yeah. That's the man. Yes. Pity he's not a junior employee. A naval captain, you say? Well, unfortunately, there. They enjoy a certain protection. Yes, he works in the uh, joint planning group of the Naval Department. There's been a leak there. A suspected leak. Well, if he really is a traitor, you think they pay him off at the roulette wheel, hmm? That's my theory. Huh? How's that, Drake? Executive type, eh? Nothing more you want to. Oh, yes. Yeah, kind of. uh, how do you reckon he passes on the information? Micro dot. Yeah, it's easy enough. Could be uh, could be on one of these. Are they for a disguise? Well, makes you look benign. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing. If you don't mind being out of character. So you can give me no idea at all of whom you suspect? I'd rather not. See, if I'm wrong, then no one is smeared. You see? Oh, well. That sounds fair enough. Do you think you could dream up some phony plan that our man, if he is a traitor, could pass on to the opposition? <laughs> Now I know you again. What do you mean? That's my boy. Flinty-eyed old Scrooge.
Good evening, sir. I wonder if you've thought about your future lately. All right. Get to the point. Sometimes at the rosiest moments, there's an ugly shock round the corner. Sir, so, things haven't been uh, too rosy recently, so... Uh... Slow down. Yes? See you tonight. Okay. I can't wait. Neither can I. Give me five minutes. to being spoken to like this. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, my mistake. I'm from the Ethereal Assurance Company, sir. And I assure you that young professional people these yes, days... Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I know, but I, I've got no time to talk about that now. Well, you should make time, sir. Yes, but we must all have time to think of the future. I'll be all right. Merci bien, pour les employés. Faites vos jeux, madame et monsieur. Faites vos jeux. Merci, madame. Rien ne va plus. 21, rouge, un père et face. Dear Mr. Jake, just in time. I'm down to my last hundred. It's hard. But now you're here, I know something wonderful is going to happen. I hope you're right. <laughs> oh, do you? Oh, that's lovely. I think we should drink champagne. All right. A couple of glasses. I feel so young. You look young. Oh, do you mean it? I mean really. To us. To us. Faites vos jours, madame et monsieur. Faites vos jours. Faites vos jours, madame et monsieur. Faites vos jours. Rien ne va plus. Here, you take these beastly black ones. <laughs> well, it's Betty by Sir Elsie. <laughs> Must get my beauty sleep. See it to the door. <laughs> Which door? <laughs> May we cash your chips, madam? Now, Pierre, you know I only cash them in at full moon. Uh, cab, madam? Thank you, Charles. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> or should I say au revoir? <laughs> Yeah, you've come to say goodbye too. Ah. You okay, madam? Come. <laughs> oh, do come in. <laughs> yeah. 
wondered if you would. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll take your coat. <laughs> Warm in here. Yes. Cozy, though. <laughs> Thank you. I'll uh, get you a little drink. <laughs> we'll have a little talk. <laughs> uh, I haven't been so happy since Norman died. Uh, well, no, I didn't mean that. Norman made me very happy. I, I meant I... I haven't been happy. <laughs> I understand. You would. You have that sort of face. <laughs> like that drink? Of course. I'll take that. Throw it on the carpet. suggest that you sit down and take no further part in the conversation. Uh, I thought we cured you of your little tricks. I did ask you for a raise. He was blackmailing you, I suppose. Uh, for how much? Ten thousand pounds. I hadn't any money, you see, and I saw her get all those chips, and I came back here to steal them. John! Oh, never mind. I'll forgive you. You've caused me a lot of trouble. Oh, I never dreamed it would come to this. It took me years to build up this network, and now you destroy it in one night. What does he mean, network? But it isn't wrecked. Provided there are no witnesses. Oh, I think he's going to kill us. Jenkins. Uh, I don't know any love. 